Hi there and welcome to this webinar on Moment and Simple Connections. Just going to give you a brief overview. Um, first of all, I'm going to go into um, our website and looking at our different solutions. And we will see here that we've got big building designer suites and power pads and portals, but we also then have individual programs. So what that means in essence is that in the master series, we have a big product range of products. So we have the suites, the building design suite, the power pad or power pad plus. We also have the master port plus. And we also have individual modules for analysis of frames, portals, beams, and even then adding on to those are wind analysis or beam integration or finite elements and dynamic and even seismic if that's where you live in the world. And then the physical design components, the steel, the concrete, slabs, composite connections, timber, and also some individual standalone programs such as the masonry retaining walls. Now the pile caps actually is also integrated as well. Um, this is just an old video. But looking at the connections, this connection program, we can have the connections as a standalone program on its own. Nothing else in the master series. Or we can link it directly in with the building design suite. Um, it's one of the options to add into the building design suite because even it is modular. Or we can link it in to PowerPad. PowerPad has a version of the connections included in that. Or we could link it through to our master port and take our portal frame eaves and base plates and apexes and the likes. Or we can just have a simple master frame and link it through there. So those are the different ways of handling the connections. So let's go and start the software. And I'm going to fire up the master series. It's actually appearing on the other screen. And here it is. And because I have a large cloud license I'm asked how I want to log in and I'm just going to log in as a master series only and say start now and we'll just pull this across onto the presentation screen and here we go so looking at our front screen what we're seeing is existing files, some announcements, some helpful videos. And if you were doing a trial of the connections, you would have helpful videos on connections. And before I get into the nitty gritty of using the software, I want to take you through one or two of the facilities. And one of those is called resources. And it's here is where we can update our software. But also we can look at manuals on the different aspects of the software and that's taking us through into our different manuals some of them pdfs and some of them more integrated online um, files so going into the more integrated online we will now see that we can come in and we can look at our connections it is now online and look at the different component types and see our different bracing and we can even go and go through and we can do searches and things like that all exciting stuff um, we also then have tutorials on a similar vein and we have a tutorial here on the moment and simple connections for people to learn how to use it but we find more easier to learn is through videos and if I just go to videos that again goes to our website and video guides and here we can see the getting started videos so as I mentioned connections we will have our little basic introduction connection videos 
or if we come all the way down into steel we can see our connection videos and we will see uh, a webinar from 14 months ago plate girders uh, those simple introduction ones eaves connections uh, fin plates staggered pairs all those sorts of things things are all there for you and once we finish this webinar today we will be adding hopefully this video into the collection and it will be appearing in the list of webinars so our last couple of webinars on hairy things like violent elements and cracked section slabs and everything so those are the ports of call those are ways of learning the software what I'm going to do is I am going to look at some connections and show you what we can do and then I'm going to come back in and do some work from scratch so just going into some simple demo connections show you what we can do and then we'll do some real design and show you also for those who are existing users some hints and tricks so very simple ease connection and if I move to the next joint an extended end plate ease connection and then we have a valley eaves connection and a flush multi-story connection all the same connection type primarily what we call the eaves extended end plates stiffened extended end plates so now we're getting into staggered connections and yes we're working out all the different distribution of forces across this web all the way down and you will actually see that a lot of calculations but you'll see that in that we're doing all this resultant shears across the whole connection at any point and see what happens so the maximum shear in this was 540 524 kilonewtons was the maximum we had in this area down here so still in eaves we're now in the apex and let's just get back up to the top of the results makes it look nicer nicer and what i would call a M plate at splice, still an apex connection to me. Extended M plates and stiffening. You can get the idea here how that can go. So now we're into base plates, and base plates are um, quite extensive as well. What we call a slab base plate with three bolts each side, and a slab base plate, two bolts each side, but we also have a shear key. So we're trying to take out any horizontal shear in this slab and five bolts one side in tension with a nice little compression zone resisting that and then we have with stiffeners extended to make everything even better lever arms and stronger and what we can see here is we actually have a failure uh, because we have a little failure symbol here but more importantly we have a blue background telling us that we're failing so moving forward um, similar again with the shear connector and circular hollow base plates with a pitch circle diameter and cir circular section but with a square base plate uh, with stiffening on that as well so we can do both types of arrangements and you'll notice the lovely optimized compression zone all the way around this um, base plate all based on the centroid of the axial end moment and obviously hollow square rectangulars and now we're into our beam splices this case beautiful flush countersunk bolts internal plates only it'll work you'll need a lot of bolts because you don't get that much strength um, and we also have staggered web plate connections, inner and outer bolts in this case. And we'll move along there, inner only, but without countersinking. And something similar, countersinking, but with a plate in here. So we're looking for a nice flush bottom on the base rather than the flush top. Interestingly, 
just in case it was a narrow flange we can even stagger sink, you know, pairs of bolts rather than the normal inner outer for four bolts so that this gets us a slightly better net area in our web um, and makes things work so we have a lot of configurations this is like a hybrid where we've got instead of a web plate we've got flush end plates welded they're resisting the shear and the top and bottom plates are still only resisting the um, moment and axial just while we're talking somebody's asking about only standard bolts well standard bolts what are the bolts let's look at the bolts just while we're here we might as well bolting details in this case because we don't want slip and we'll talk about that this later high strength friction grip but we have different bolts from tension control bolts from 14.9s all the way down to the 4.6s and the 4.8s um, some of the even more obscure grades of bolts you can even add in your own bolts grades so no not just standard bolts um, in that respect so moving forward and uh, we're into our column splices column splices are handled according to the SCI differently from beam splices in this case we've got a few warnings and um, we can find out why in a minute let's have a look why are we getting a warning and failures um, dim checks that's it so the cross center from here to here with this thickness of plate is too much so we would need to do some work on that so we can get those bits of information available to us and then we have a more robust connection with a division plate and angle cleats so there's no welding or anything involved uh, we can also go for those very light column splices mainly power pits and the likes we can do two welded cap and base plate and have them welded up and design that accordingly so very flexible moving forward hollow section splices nothing there to see much very exciting and then we come into the simple connections we do your shear connections for flexible end plates as here we do it for fin plates we'll see in a minute and angle cleats but more importantly in this one we're actually doing it for a built-up welded section not for a standard section and then we come in and we'll see where we have dropped the height 30 mil so we don't have to notch this and it gives us better solutions and obviously in this case we possibly have some problems and we're having staggered bolts as well so moving forward you're then into the angle cleats and then you're into the column connections and here we have a classic column with fin plates and the interesting thing is we even notch out either the top or the bottom or both of the flanges on one side to allow that beam to be presented accurately so how it's fabricated because otherwise you couldn't get the the beam in um, is considered in the design and even in here the notching of the beam to be clear so we're having this stripped away totally in one side looks like the top um, doesn't matter from a design point of view it'll still look at the design of the um, notched sections so very very detailed and we're into angle cleats again and now we're into are beam over beam under connections very useful because we can get rid of high shears in compression uh, for those wee domestic works without putting too much on it and we can even haunch it a lot neater to make it quite useful and then into the bracing this is a flat with two individual uh, cleats and then we're into a single cleat and we have two angles so an angle a flat and a hollow section and this hollow section is 
through so it's welded all down the sides and around the top with a ceiling plate as well. Um, and then we're into the others. So quite an arrangement of different styles and types of connections can be done. I'm going to start from scratch and show you how it's built up, how easy it is to work with it. So I'm going to go into program connections so I'm going to take a brand new file webinar 1121 so November oh, we can't all have slashes so use the hyphen you can see it's checking for you all the time and I go create. So it's now going to say that's great, great, great. We'll accept all the default facilities and we'll just say apply and now we're going to choose so we can choose our connection type an Eve's connection and we get this little database of typical connections that we can use as a starter on our joint. So I'm just going to go in and take a simple flushed end plate. Just to get me started, it's not what I'm going to use. I'm going to change everything around. So I'm going to go and click on the rafter and I'm going to say that this is going to be a 457-19182 and it will be grade 35. I'm going to have a haunch and it will be the same section as the rafter. I'm going to have a haunched length of say 2500, that's from the centre line, and a haunched depth overall of say for a 457, say 900. So now we've got a bit, we'll look at the column in a second. Let's put a slope on this 7.5 degrees. Okay. Now let's look at the column, and of course the use B is going to be way up 610. They're about 610 by 229, 113 will do suffice. So what we're seeing initially is a couple of warnings and a couple of um, failures. But before we do that, let's get back to the forces and put some real forces in that 475 kilonewtons, a shear of 225, and we'll put in an axial of 175. End of haunch, yes, we will have a moment as well of 295. And of course, we'll design it. Column forces, we don't need those unless we're considering forces coming from above coming into it. So what have we got? We've got some capacity failures. We've got weld failures. And we've got end of haunch failure here. We've also got this. So this one, first of all, is telling us to get this bolt away. So M plate rows, and we'll come in here. It's only been 70, they're going to make it 80. That's not enough. 90. And now it's okay. And what the problem there was is that when we look at this, this bolt was so close we couldn't actually present it through the hole without hitting and you know this haunch on the way through. So we just minimize that down to 70 and you'll see that now that length there is going to hit bang out there. So put that back up to 90 and there we can see. So we're sitting with our basic joint values. We've got some failures here. We need more bolts. It's very simple. Let's go to the upper bolts. I've got 55, I bit tight I think, I'm going to make that 60, and I'm going to make this 90, more realistic, and 90, and now that is working, we don't need any more bolts, so three rows of bolts, it's a flush end plate at the minute, I'm going to change that to being 
20 top and bottom. That's going to affect this, cause that to clash. So coming back to my bolts, I'm going to make that 70. And that now works. So 70, 90, 90 is a fit. Bit tight looking. I'm going to make that, say, 80 down. So 80 from the very top with our projection. So haunch welds need to be sorted. So we can see we've got haunch welds and we've got stiffeners. So let's look at our welds. Our haunch welds, we're asking it for a And now that's no longer a problem. We also have this stiffener, which is in fact the haunch compression stiffener. We're dealing with Eurocode, and one of the problems in the Eurocode is that it really likes to see a stiffener out here to prevent premature compression. That's an empirical ratio, and it doesn't even affect what the forces are. It just says if the dimensions and the yield lines, yield stresses are X, we need an ex a stiffener, which I think is rather unfair. And I believe when they revise the Euro codes um, for publication next year, they will make allowance of that. So there was a check on that compression column tension haunch compression zone and you'll see that there is a ratio required in here. So that's my joint working. Now if I turn around and said oh but you know portals have uplift on them as well what do I do? Well I take the one loading case that I have and I add another case and I'm going to put in minus three seven five minus three hundred in shear just to make life awkward uh, minus a hundred and it won't really matter minus two hundred and print this case yes and now we need a bigger weld down here and we need more bolts so it's needing more bolts it's trying to use those bolts in reversal but they're so sh close to the compression zone, their lever arms are tiny. So let's sort out the bolt first and change that to an 8mm weld. Now that isn't necessarily the case because once we put in another row of bolts, of bolts here, it's going to relieve that. So let's go to our bolt rows and I only have one row in here. I'm just going to say add and it's now a second row at 90 and you can see that second row at 90 then alleviates the pressure on this weld because part of the load is going through that and into the weld but the rest is going into this bolt and out. So that's designing in connection with two rows with um, reversal. We have a lot of things we can do here. We can even turn around and say well if we were in massive moments we could even turn around and say, let's go for an extended end plate. And that's very easy. So what I'd do is I would say my projection is 100. I would then have to sort out my spacing. So my bolts make the first one 50 down and make the second one about 110. And that gives me the spacing. The stiffener here is coming in by default. I don't necessarily need it. Take it out and see it happens. In reversal, it's needed, not in the tension zone. So I'm going to come around and say, if I go to the previous case, it wouldn't need it. But in the reversal case, it does. Now, how do I make sure that that doesn't happen, that I don't see it? And that's very simple. We can scan the brief for any failures and it'll work through the loading cases and stop when it hits a failure. So that is telling me, ding ding, don't forget this loading case now needs a top stiffener. So I'm put a top stiffener in. And that's how simple and quick it is to do that sort of joint. And we can do all sorts of joints that way. Now, if I like this joint, I could store this as a template for myself. So what I can go to into is utilities and save joint as a template. But before I do that, I'm going to do a little trick. I am going to first of all turn off 
3 the, the colouring. We want it as plain. And then going to go and just for the example change the section size because we would always change it eventually in each case to a heavier one. And that just gives us a better diagrammatic view. But it doesn't have to be done. I'll just go back down to the 82 and we'll see what I mean. So now I want to save it. Utilities. Save joint as template. So I'm going to give it a name. Tommy Eaves. And it's going to be Eaves, comma, extended, comma. So a couple of keywords. And I'm going to add another keyword here. And that is 457 by 190 or 191. Add this tag. And now I have to create a preview. So moving this about, I can move this in and out to um, zoom and I can pan the image and I can even re-square the image. So what we can do is we can take that. We don't need to have the full end of the haunch. We want the critical parts visible. So the more we can include, the better. And I'm going to say capture that and save. So now, if I go and add another joint, just quickly an apex, and then add a third one, and come back and do that. And it was going to be one of the 457s. There's my joint called Tommy that is a 457191. And I've now got an example I can then work with. I need to then go in and put all the forces in and modify it and play around with it. So very clever, very useful, the templates. What I like about the templates is that there's not just our templates, because I was doing that um, under the Master Series templates, the ones that are default, and as a Master Series engineer I have permission to write to those files and I can even delete that one so I don't use any more. You also have your own user defined ones so you can see all of them or just yours which will be for you or just the master series ones. So if I was to look at Apex connections and I was to go here, I can see that I've got some typical M plated splices. So I've got a 457, a 254, and a 152. And I've even got a huge big one. This is 610 with four rows of bolts, four bolts per row. So those four would, are more useful. So I can say, right, I'm after a splice. And I'm after. A 152. So if there was a lot of them, I could say 152. There I go. So it is worthwhile creating multiple copies at different sizes um, of sections and identifying those. You know, obviously with different bolts, different end plate thicknesses, and everything. So you're not having to do as much each time. And here we go, and we can see this is the 152. So these splices are very useful. These templates are exceedingly useful. If I go in and add another joint, you'll see that we have them in the simple connections, the different types, and the flexibles, obviously. Um, double minimum notched, or just double standard. And then single offset and staggered. So it's going to be overnotched. Uh, if you look at the bracing connections, again this comes in to being very useful. K brace with flats, K brace with two separate flats, CHS with a T plate and CHS embedded. So if I was to go into this, 
you'll see that we're getting, let's turn on the pretty pictures again. You're getting your embedded CHS connections with the welds coming down on the sides and then the covering plate on that as well. So all the loads being carried back into the CHS along its length as a nice design. And in this case, we've set it up to be separate. So it's very worthwhile expending um, a while creating your template. And yes, you can then share that. It is a simple template file that you can um, send. We will actually dig out where that's stored so you can then share that with each other, um, which will be quite useful. Uh, it's something I didn't get around to checking out this morning, and I apologize for that. Um, the templates are for whatever you need. So if I go add, and I want to do a base plate, and it's a base plate, you'll see we also have here the pitch circle diameter slab base and the four bolt slab base. Uh, both of those are significant so quite useful for you to be able to do those and you can see we can store them in color or you can store them uh, in black and white these ones were all stored in color and um, again the choice is up to you for that so that is the standalone connections phenomenal very very powerful program the output and if you think about it i've got five briefs some of them more interesting than others. And this one here doesn't even have any forces. Left column arrangement. And axial load going to make it 200. See it happens. It's work fine. And then this one. I'm going to make the axial uh, 300 and it's fine. Oh, let's make it 500, see what happens. It's not fine. So we can see, you know, we would need to do something here. Uh, weld is too long, short. Um, the tension is, is failing on the brace. The tension on the gusset's failing. Well, what would you expect? And the shear and bearing is also failing. So obviously 500 is not a good idea on that one. And you can do and you can see you can modify your angles and everything. So the bottom brace cook coming in at 30 degrees, so it's slightly different. And these are setting out, and you have full styles, straight wings just coming in with an extension beyond uh, clearance of, say, 25mm in this case, and projection of 15 so off it goes very straightforward this is 15 that's 25 and off you go very very simply and you can do all that yourself now output is fantastic we can print our output and we just go print output and i'll just select them all and i can either give full details i'm going to do this three times and just bear with me i'm going to print to my master series PDF writer and I'm going to print all that and it's stored in the repository because I may need to put something else onto that PDF file so it's 33 pages I'm now going to print it again this time I'm going to print out a summary of each joint rather than the full output and print that and print and off it goes and it's probably should have created five maybe six seven pages and then print a third time and this time just the pretty pictures which will be a full page graphic only and print so we should now have 41 jumping up, hopefully, to 46. Okay, so that's all our document 
printed out several times. Let's have a look at what it's given us. And I'm going to put that. The best place to find it is the desktop. I'm going to just go save. And hopefully it'll reload it. So I now have to go and try and find it. And it's come up over here, thank goodness. Automatically, I just need to move something on my other screen out of the way. And then over here. So what have we got? Well, we don't need that. Let's zoom down. You've got the company who did it. They had obviously a version that was created with. And you have your graphic, your summary results here and then your detailed output and for an eaves connection that can be quite a lot and obviously for two loading cases here we are loading case two that can be doubly quite a lot of input so we're down to page 11 11 pages before we get to the next joint so then we hit all those so come all the way down and that's all your detailed output and i was at around 30 something when i did that so there's your a your brace and we now come back and do the same but this time we're doing just the summary so we're getting our con connection our unity values second loading case unity values connection unity values connection unity values connection unity values and finally connection and in this case because it's so long takes a second page unity value so a lot less output and what we find is people would actually print maybe one or two with the full output and then go back and print the rest just as summaries and if you want to give your designs to a detailer you can print just the graphic for each of the pages and have those coming out in just a4 style for detailing up so very detailed tailed output. If you have building design suite or you have PowerPad, you will have the option to export these to a Word document instead and you can then tailor your output and remove some things just to make it more compact. And we also have CAD export. We can export our details to DXF files very quickly going to take them all, page layout, I'm going to say it's going to be A3 and it'll be at 1 and 200, whoops, let's go A1 at 1 to 25, just put that over there. doesn't really matter where you put them because you'll tidy that up once you get into your AutoCAD and maybe even say no title block, so it's just coming in naked as a 1 to 25 drawing and export it's suggesting 1 to 20 is the biggest 1 to 25 I'm happy with continue and it's now coming back in here but on my other screen it's loading AutoCAD for us and I will uh, get that coming over to you in a sec just while that's doing that and grabbing its stuff, um, so just looking at the questions, um, okay, does the calculations comply combine tension and shear analysis design check? For your connections, yes, we have tension and shear and moments uh, all in one. Uh, in your base plates, absolutely, you can have tension rather than compression in your base plates. Uh, is there a base plate designed for resin anchored bolts? Short answer is no. The long answer is I believe that's coming for 2022. That will be part of the Master Series in 2022. Uh, okay, so here we go with our details come through with our annotations and sometimes you might someone might say some dubious colors but that's all just part of the color scheme so if I was to go and 
So let's look at my layers, which have put themselves on the other page, other screen. Here we go. I could turn around and say, well, well text. Let's just change that from red. Okay, where's my controller gone? AutoCAD's controller seems to have disappeared, so I'm just going to close that down. I see. Oh, gosh, it's put it way over, out of the way, under other things. There it goes. So I'm going to change that to being blue text. Say OK. And there we go, slightly clearer. Obviously, you can, can configure your uh, color schemes as well and your layering tables to suit. So I'm just going to close AutoCAD. I won't save that. So I now want to look at integrated design. Because not only does the master series moment and simple connections work as a standalone. It will work with a, uh, a master series frame. So you've done your big power pad design, your building design, the suite design. You've done your frame, be it a portal or a multi-story or anything like that. You can then come along and start designing your connections. So here we go, a nice little weird arrangement of primary and secondary beams and slabs and we even have ground and first floor loading and let's show a key we can see the different intensities there so yes they are different at least that's a relief and we even have some line loads around it as well for the tie beams to carry some additional load just to give them something to do. Uh, we also then have wind analysis on this structure and if you look at the results graphical it's going to analyze our 30 odd cases very quickly. Um, internal pressure, favorable and unfavorable wind, everything all considered. And turning off 3D and turning off sorry colors because let's go back to just old-fashioned black and bending moments look right uh, scale them down a wee bit yep they all look to be the right shapes and obviously importantly my reflections okay my bracing might be getting a bit annoyed but pull this back down to a one-to-one and obviously these two these columns are having a problem but everything else looks to be fine so what can we do we can do two things we can come into design and say I'm not interested in designing the steel I want to design the connection so let's design a connection okay somebody's been playing around with some forces and we'll ignore those uh, and joints. I'm going to take this and delete this joint. Okay, and I'm going to delete this. I didn't realize I had some joints in here. And I'm going to delete this. And delete. And delete. Oh, well, we'll leave some of those in. It's taking a joint here and an eaves joint here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a new joint. And it's going to be an eaves joint. And I'm going to primarily assume it's just a standard eaves joint. A haunched eaves joint. So now it's going to ask me where. So is that it's going to say where, and I'm going to say onto this. So you pick the rafter, 
and there is a wee bit of minor axis moment coming because of um, the fact I think these ties weren't pinned and therefore it's flexing. But other than that, we've got our three meter long haunch member, uh, which is on the slope. We've got our design working with our basic template saying three bolts top and two bottom is fine. Um, do we need that stiffener? Let's find out. Let's take out the top stiff, stiffener here and see if we get a problem. Yes, we do. The code requires that stiffener. And if we look at it, we will see that we don't just have the one loading case. We have all of the ultimate loading cases. So in our case, we went for 1.25 and the 1.35 permutations plus the equivalent horizontal forces. That's going to be fun in games. Um, but it's all doable. So all the cases are there. And what we can now say is scan this brief for any loading cases that are going to fail and see very quickly whether or not we have a problem. And we do in one of those loading cases in reversal, minimum dead plus wind being the, the dominant. Yep, wind favorable. So we do need a top stiffener of say 10 mil. That solves that problem, but that could introduce its own problem. So we should always then scan the brief forget again to make sure there's no other effects have been taken place. And everything looks good. And it's fine. There are no failing briefs. So there we go. So now we can do that for each joint. But what I want to do is to come back and you'll notice actually that I've cheated a wee bit because there's a little green symbol here and here. And even in, in here. And that little green symbol is because we're designing not just this one joint, we're designing all four, uh, one, two, three, four of them. It's not going to do these ones because they're going the opposite direction. But once you design those, you can just copy it and check it for the other as well. So it's telling us that we're designing for these three matching nodes um, as well. So that's why we have so many loading cases and it makes your life easy. So all I've had to do there is turn around and in design I have said that I am going to create connection design groups. So let's have a look at my connection design groups. So we can see that one's got a wee bit awry because it thinks it's up there instead of, and likewise that one should be up there. So in here, what I'm going to do in apply mode is take that out and apply it down there. That'll keep that happy and that's there. And then when I go to the next one, is these apexes. Uh, it shouldn't be down there. It should be there. Not there, but there. And you could argue the same on the other side, but since it's symmetrical, it won't actually matter at all in that case. And if we then come, we'll see that we've done all our columns, including this little short one because it's looking at the part of the member. So in each case, we're telling it how, base plate, and I'm just gonna call this, give it a name, it helps. And we're going to assume we'll permit a 1% variation in forces without, with the within 1%, we then don't do a separate loading case for them. Keeps the cases down. And then the fourth one is that. What we can also do is see that we can also add in a 
column fin plate and I'm going to add that to any one of these and it should do them all. So if I come back out and I go to my design, steel connection design, And again, we didn't pin those um, braces and thus they're giving us a little bit of a problem. We can see that we've got these columns already done and we'll see that all the others been highlighted in green and they're all been designed. And we have a problem with our concrete pressure. But you know, it's still been done. If I was to go and add in a simple connection that was a fin plate column and then choose one of these members it would do all the rest as well and you'll see that in fact it won't do them because that is a circular hollow section whereas if I apply it to this member that is a I section and in fact that does not the same number of members, so therefore it's a different group in this case. So it is fussy, but where there is repetition, it will save you a lot of work and get your connections more consistent. Now, just while we're here, there's a couple of interesting of the newer connections some people may not be familiar with, and that is these two. If we look at this, this is a beam over a column sorry yes a beam over a column so rather than connecting into the side and sign we're carrying this across and therefore it's designing it thus if you look at this one that's a beam under a column so we're going to stick that down on that clearly in reality we would choose one of these two and in fact I would have this support at either side and not here um, because I think if I look at my pins it is pinned either side here and thus we shouldn't really have done that as a beam over column if I just delete that yes I would choose that to be a flexible end plate so add flex so there's a flexible column and choose the member and there we go it's done as you would expect as a proper flexible column and it is perfectly fine so we have a multitude of ways of doing things and this use of design groups will speed things up because I could take this pair and make it the same as this one in the one design group by creating a design group for the two of them and that makes my life and using the templates I can set up my styles a lot quicker rather than having to configure everything all the time so what I'm going to do before I let you all go is have a look at all the questions and answer any um so combined connection uh forces yes i've answered that resin i've done that uh, did that last connect detail show the flanges the fin plate connection ground flush to life for deeper fin plates uh well <laughs> yes and no we will we will grind out or cut out the um, end plate or the base plate where it's needed. Here you can see um, it did theoretically need it notched out or ground out, as you say, to get a clearance through there with uh, within normal. Obviously, if that was a, a wider beam, then yes, you would most definitely need to take it out. In this case, you might have argued it's okay, but it does at that point give you less w w wiggle room in here um, let's have a look at it um, options design options 
and you will find that under this that there's a minimum clearance of 10 mil so if I reduce that minimum clearance down to 5 mil and apply it is still requiring that to be notched down so we can set that tolerance a bit better if you need to is there a connection available where the UC beam will rest on top of the UC column? Yes, there is, and I just did that for this example here. Uh, is there an example for hollow section columns? Yes, um, there is. Can the template library to save onto the cloud? We will check this up, Stephen, and see exactly what you can do there. I might record a secondary video on that for everybody. But this video will be loaded up onto the web, web in the day or so. Uh, on a double ease connection, if you add main stiffeners to the right beam, is it recognized in the left? It's not. You need to apply it to both because they're not all necessarily at the same level and, it's, and it makes sense. And also the stifter could be not full width but short as well. Will there be an option to automatically calculate the minimum tying forces on any connection linked to master frame? I can see there's a manual override. Well, let's have a look at that. A very good question. Uh, design options. When we're looking at tie forces to the Euro code, we would look at a minimum input if but we can also say that the old SCI publication is for BS only uh, we can say how many stories you want to consider so by default the type force is going to use the full vertical in the euro code uh, for you unless you input otherwise but to the BS it's a more pragmatic where four stories and below we don't need to tie the full um, load which I find strange but that's the way it goes uh, so there is some manipulation there now you also have the ability of inputting your own tie forces uh, from a link design they would normally come through if they were lower than that they will and stay at the 75. How to add a stiffener in the gusset? Oh, very good question. Let's have a look here. There is. I'm going to go. Right, so that's the, this one. If I want to put a stiffener in here, for example because it was failing that's quite interesting it's not the end plate it's not the main stiffeners it is the bolt rows so for a top bolt it's always this below the bolt so bolt row 2 I can say give me a 10 mil stiffener and there it is below bolt row 2 will be centered and I can even say if it's part or full width. Now if that was on the bottom stiffeners, uh, I could then put it above on the lower bolts. I could say give me another stiffener uh, 10 mil. And this one will be put in, not centered, but the default uh, size for gussets. It's going to tell you 45 mil above or below the last stiffener in that case so we can do that we can play around with those we can make them short or we can make them um, full stiffeners so that bolt row 
in here. It is a column. We could even put it only on the end plate side. So if it was a thin end plate but need it stiffened, particularly for an extended end plate or something, you could do that. And you can go part column. You can then go full column and vice versa on part column with end plate, full column with end plate or end plate only. And the popular one is the part. So yes, we can. Okay, how can you switch between each connection if you have more than one connection of design? Right, if it's standalone, that's very straightforward and you just move either going next, previous, or if you've been sensible and given each brief a good title, you can move to that brief directly um, for its design. So that is quite uh, can we print repeat printing again? It'll be in the video, uh, Mohammed. So uh, I don't need to. Uh, also, supporting beam column web check for compression. Well, when we're dealing with um, these forces and that, we'll certainly check for any uh, load. You know, from a tying point of view, onto the column to check the column doesn't buckle. Um, if we're doing our eaves, of course, the um, the column is um, checked. Uh, sometimes the printing of the sketch is messed up. Well, if I left this like that and then tried to print, it's going to go crazy because there's not enough room. It's going to split it all over the place. Little tricks you have. Zoom to extents and then take it right out. You also have a couple of other tools to change your split view. You can go for a top and bottom view and pull that right down. So this is going to allow you the biggest real estate for it to grab its screen capture and work with. So that can sometimes be useful for getting that. You also, um, I'm just going to go, there we go. You have some facilities for the colors, but you can also change your text size as well. Um, not necessarily advisable all the time because it can start infringing um, on that. Is there a way to add a minor axis moments to base plates? At the moment, there is not, Kevin. Uh, what we recommend is you take a leaf out of the um, concrete design where you magnify the moment in the major axis by a ratio of the lever arms and the moments. Uh, there is a technical note on that. Uh, right, anything else? Yes, when you're link, somebody's asking about printing results. When you're linking results, if it's a simple connection like this, then you only have one loading case. The maximum shear loads can go. But when you're dealing with, for example, an eaves or an apex or even one of those or a base plate there we go and you will see that you have the number of cases um, when you scan for failures it should normally stop with the most critical loading case in this case this loading case needs an extra stiffener but you have the facilities in here to say print this case so if you went to the next case you could say yes print this case as well if you felt it was significant um, so you have that facility there to set which loading cases you want printed um, having considered your load factors
Okay. Um, can the connection design count your song bolts and all connection types? No, it's really only for the beam and column splices where you would be using countersunk bolts. Everything else, eaves and apex, there isn't really a need for countersinking because it's not uh, necessary. Right. I'm going to leave this with you guys, and I want to thank you all for attending. I We've gone over by about 10 minutes, and I will review the other questions and answer them. We will send you all a little email in a day or two with the link to the video. We'll also send you um, the answer to all of the questions. Um, so what I would like to do lastly is to invite anybody who hasn't used the software to come along and go in, choose your product connections, and then just say start your free trial. Put in your information, obviously not in Afghanistan, and put in your details, and then you will get a link to download a 14-day trial to the software. Now, as of this year, we offer both perpetual and subscription licenses and the subscription license is quite economical and um, is very useful for having an extended assessment of the software with, without making that big um, commitment. Obviously from country to country prices vary with different um, currencies and the like so anybody wants a price for either of them just drop me a line sales at masterseries.com and we'll pick that up and help you out. So ladies, gentlemen, everybody, stay safe, have a good day, and thank you for attending.